I want to say rest in peace to John Lewis, civil rights icon. I got to tell you, as John, um, John Lewis is a pillar of U.S. history. I will not take that away from man, that man, just like I don't take away the fact that Bernie Sanders um, stood for civil rights. That man was abused on that bridge. He did go to jail a lot of times. And it's good to know John history as a civil rights activist. But the John Lewis, the congressman, was dog crap. Yeah, I said it, dog crap. His whole time in office, he became that little guy on the Benny Hill show. And uh, that's John Lewis. And Benny Hill was the white political establishment. Heading him on the head. That's all you got from John Lewis. Well, we need to be more like John Lewis. No, I don't. No, I don't. Because John Lewis got to Congress and he served party over people so no i don't have to be like john lewis i don't want to be like john lewis matter of fact bill bubba i'm more like stokely carmichael yeah just call me kwame kwame did more for black empowerment and black equal rights and black empowerment than john has ever did in his whole entire life. That incident on the bridge. I give him that. Because he could have stayed home. And a lot of us. We won't go that far. To this very day. We'll stay home. Unless we see millions out there. But will you be the first 10 to go out there? Will you be the first five? He was on the front lines with Dr. King. I give him that. But you know who was on the front line with Dr. King also? Because King had another direction he wanted to go. Professor Kwame. Stokely Carmichael. So many problems I had with John Lewis. I confronted John Lewis at the Schomburg in Manhattan when he came to speak to a bunch of people there. And I told him, look, you suppose that fought for our equal fault for civil rights, fought for us having a right to vote. You worked hard on voting rights. How come you went out there and campaigned for a woman who cheated in the 2016 election, doing whatever she can to stop people like me from our rights to vote for somebody other than Hillary Clinton. Didn't want to say anything. You're supporting a rigor. You're supporting a cheater. How come you sat there and lied and said on the march in Selma, you saw Hillary Clinton, you know, Bernie Sanders say I was on the march of Washington back in, in the late sixties. And you're going to try to tell him he wasn't. That's a whipping boy. That's that little guy on Benny Hill that they pat on the head. Get out there and say that for us and we'll, we'll we the cleanser pat you on the head. And sure enough, he did that and they pat him on the head. The John latter part of John Lewis is not impressive. Matter of fact, that was quite disgusting. It showed weakness. It did not show power. The civil rights icon end up being a public political icon. You. He didn't do anything to push for the serious needs of the black community. Matter of fact, he never really wanted to entertain it. He probably entertained it just to make it seem like he is doing something for us. But to really get down to the meat of the matter and start pushing and start lobbying and getting people on his side. He knew that he was that little guy on the Benny Hill show that you tap on the head. He knew that when it came to some real substance, some real tangible for black people, he was too afraid to take it to Benny Hill. I got to stop saying Benny Hinn, <laughs> Benny Hill. Benny Hinn is the preacher on TV. He didn't have the guts to fight for the true needs of black people. He'll rather sit on the side and fight for the true needs of all people, knowing that the Democratic is trying to shift the power from black people 
out the door. He's, they're trying to water down black voting power because they know the voting power for blacks normally in the corner are strong and they don't want to risk that. So what they're going to do is do whatever they can to invite other people in to the so-called open tent or big tent. John Lewis would not do that. I never saw him. I never met him. Dude was part of SNCC. Bernie Sanders worked in Chicago and student um, fighting for student housing. And you going to say he wasn't get man. And look, <laughs> he kissed the cleanse behind. Now, let me say some cleanse did some good things for all people, but they hurt the black people tremendously. Hillary Clinton hurt the black people tremendously. Their buddy Donald Trump hurt black people tremendously, even as he wasn't even a legislator. Donald Trump had so much, so much pull and so much clout in New York that whatever he said took weight in New York. That's why I don't trust neither one of these parties. They both will stab you in the back, especially black people. That's why black people need to detach themselves from parties and build your structure from outside the party via the advice of Martin Luther King, via the advice of Stokely Carmichael, Michael, via the advice of many of our black leaders. You will never hold true power in a party by joining the party where well, you got to be at the table. Well, the table ain't there. Dr. King didn't join a party. He was at the table and he changed things. Sure, you do want to get black people in the office. You do, do want to you want to get somebody that's going to push your agenda in office, but you still don't lean on them to do it. If you still got to keep your power on the outside. And once you keep your power on the outside, you make sure those who you put on the inside get the job done or you tell them you're going to be out. I put you there for a reason. I can put you in the Republican Party. I can put you in the Democratic Party because we collectively are the biggest party. That's why that's why Malcolm X talked about um uh uh what's the name of the he wanted to start a um uh a a, a party too. No, uh, it wasn't uh, Black Nationalist Party. And it wasn't a black nationalist party that we black people hate white people like the white nationalists is white we hate we white nationalists we're the kings we're superior and everybody it wasn't a superiority thing with malcolm x with the black nationalist party it basically said we're going to vote for our own people that in our neighborhoods which you're supposed to do people in chinatown they trying to vote a chinese people person for office in new york they're not trying to vote for a black person on that they voting for one of theirs in their town. Italy town, same thing. Haiti town, same thing. You vote for people in your hood to represent your hood. You do business in your hood so you can keep money in the hood. John Lewis was pushing that integration to the point where it became sickening. Nothing wrong with integration, but you don't integrate everything, bro. That's John Lewis. Again, I respect John Lewis as a civil rights advocate most people won't be able to do what he did whatever he did for his um, voting rights and voting uh, changing the voting laws whatever he did I give him his props for that before us helping black people get to the pinnacle of the same equality as whites which black people Again, when I say black, I'm not talking about all black. Understand this, my people that may not, that may be immigrant black. It's nothing against you. It's just they owe us. They don't owe you. They probably owe you from if you came here before the Immigration Act and you did, had to deal with Jim Crow. They owe you for that. The hell you, they put black people through. All of us through. Some of our great civil rights leaders uh, were immigrants. We ain't talking about that. We get to that in our second phase. We talking about the first phase. 400 years of free labor all black people. And we don't deserve anything. Yet this man knew that 
and didn't advocate for that. He advocated the normal corporate capitalist agenda as their little petting boy. Oh, I hate to say that. I know that hurts. I know you black people, the nerds, are you talking about John Lewis like that? No, I'm telling the truth about John Lewis. I'm telling the truth. And he didn't even want to answer me when I confronted him. I hate to see that. I hate to see a person die. I, I hate to see a person die on a cushion instead of a sword. So I said, Bernie Sanders, if you was a real revolutionary, you would have went all out because you don't get another chance to show that you're a revolution. You got two shots and you messed it up and handed everything to Joe Biden. You don't do that if you're a revolutionist. That's why I respect Car Stokely Carmichael way more than I respect John Lewis because he was willing to die. And he knew they were killing. They were willing to kill him. And that's why he moved this base to Africa. And begin to build internationally a coalition from Africa that branched all over the world. John Lewis decided to run for office and worked on the inside and end up becoming the little guy we pat on the head. We show him his respect. He's a silver icon, but he's more our little uncle that we know and love. And we want to make sure he stay up under us. I'm done. Rest in peace. Civil rights icon, John Lewis. Sorry to tell you, though, your latter was not greater than your former. You went from civil rights icon to I'm not going to get you any equal rights because I am a con. Oh, I know that hurt. Oh, I know some folks going to cuss me out. Oh, my mama going to whoop me. Oh, God. Come on, ma. 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 I got to tell the truth. Look at the record, mama. I love you. I know you love John Lewis. I know y'all cried. Oh, I know Obama. I know y'all people don't know Obama. Oh, I sure miss him. I don't. That's how he gets you with that purple. Look at John Lewis. Uh, uh, is our icon. And uh, eventually, uh, John Lewis will be America. America will be John Lewis. No, no. This black generation will walk around in spirit of John Lewis. No. This new black generation is far, far, far from that John Lewis way of being politicking. No, they are Stokely Carmichael all day, every day. They have the spirit of Malcolm X all day, every day. They have woken up to who the real power players are. And they're going to raise up power players in their spirits. America going to get uncomfortable. White America may get uncomfortable. But they're going to be pushing. You want to know how you recognize those type of people? It's that when they start pushing agenda, everybody else get queasy and they want to tell us to delay our agenda for the sake of all humanity. Really? We've been delaying that agenda. We've been delaying our agenda for the sake of all humanity for over 400 years. It's time. To, no, no, we're not stepping back. We're not pulling back. We demand what we are owed. Oh, but if you do that, you're going to get Trump. Oh, so be it. If I don't do it, we're going to get Trump. There's no guarantee, Joe Biden. I'd rather die for the sake of reaching my goals. How is it saying? I'd rather die uh, trying to achieve the possible than live in the mediocre. I don't want to do that. His latter years was living in the mediocre. He didn't die achieving the impossible. And it hurts me to my heart that your great legacy end up being a great flop. 